Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV, and I've got a customer that wrote me and says that his flight controller is not showing up in beta flight when he plugs it in, right? So I'm just making this real quick video because for tech support, this is what I need you to do uh, if you're looking for me to help you with this issue. So let me just split the screen up here. Uh, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my ugly face off of here and I will just do a two screen option like this. There we go, okay? So let's say here's your flight controller. This is just one that I grabbed off my desk. It's one of our test flight controllers. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug this into the computer. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that I want you to be in your device manager. So if you're running Windows, just right click on your start button here and then left click on run and then type the word control. Okay, and hit enter. When that comes up, you're gonna get to right here and I want you to go to device manager. This is the part that's important, okay? Once you go to device manager, let me maximize this. Here's the main thing. You notice how there's nothing here that says COM ports, right? There's no COM ports right now. When I plug in my flight controller, I'm gonna hear it initialize in Windows. So here goes, just listen to this. Let me make sure I got nothing touching, no five volts touching anything. There we go. Let's plug this in. Listen. Okay, there's Windows recognizing it. And then all of a sudden, if it's in the system right, you're gonna see this ports. It's gonna be in alphabetical order. So you're gonna go right after the end, it'll say ports. And if you click on that, you should see something that says CP2102 or STM Electronics uh, Virtual Comm Port. That is the driver that's run. To run this board, you're looking for STM, uh, ST, sorry, Microelectronics Virtual Comm Port, okay? So when you're trying to figure out why your flight controller is not recognized by Betaflight, the first step to do is to make sure that in your device manager, when you plug it in, you actually see something happen here. If you don't see something happen here, or if it just says COM port, whatever, it doesn't show anything with STM electronics or ST, ST micro electronics, sorry, um, or the other one, CP210X, uh, and it just says COM port, then I need you to, then you need the drivers. On the flip side, some people will actually see stuff pop in down here under universal serial bus, and you will have maybe two options. Here I have one, and then I have WSD print provider. Sometimes if you don't have any drivers loaded or if your computer isn't recognizing it at all, uh, it'll drop down and give you two USB uh, uh, options here. Uh, you'll have another one right, right below here. Um, if you see that, then that's also a driver issue. So uh, do not use the uh, Impulse RC. Don't use any of that junk uh, because all that can do is that can really cause your uh, computer to have some other problems with drivers down the road. All you have to do is in beta flight, you are given these two options here. CP210X drivers, you click here. STM USB drivers, you click here. Follow the instructions for getting both of these drivers. One of these you're going to have to register on their site. Just do it. It's the way you're supposed to do it. Put your name in your email then you'll get the link to download the drivers you'll also want to get this zadig download just store that because if you cannot get into dfu mode then you will need to use this and i'll show you videos on that but for now the main thing on this video is to say look before we start doing any support on this i need to know what you have here so i'll need to see a screenshot of this in order to help you uh, once we get that, then we can take it uh, to the next level. All right, guys, that's step one. So just use that to guide you on, hey, it doesn't connect. Keep this in mind as well. If your USB cable, right, this right here, is not a data cable, and don't guess, because you'll be wasting everybody's time. Verify it's a data cable. Well, how do you do that? Take your phone or whatever, plug it into this, if this is what you use for your Android phone, for example, and plug it into the computer. If you can send data back and forth, it's a data cable. If it's a charging cable, you won't be able to send data back and forth and it will not work. And I will not spend an hour on the phone with you trying to figure out why it's not working when you haven't taken the time to at least check this out. So please make sure you have a data cable, guys. It, it's really, it saves us a bunch of time. It's a real big waste of time to sit there when we find out it's a charging cable at the end of the day. So go grab a couple of them, okay? Just make sure they work. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Please subscribe to the channel here below. I always appreciate your help with that. And other than that, God bless, guys. Be safe. And we will see you guys later. Peace.